gonna lie, it's like Christmas. <laughs> So it's been about three weeks since the dino video and we have made an immense amount of, when I say we, I always mean Andy. I have zero to do with this fucking car at this point. On the dyno, we had two small leaks. One was an oil leak, which was from this oil cooler right here. Andy went ahead, got that all dialed in. Can you explain to me, Andy, what that was? Cause the fittings were a little messed up or something. It's actually an adapter that screws into the bottom of the, uh intercooler that then goes to a o-ring based connector mm. and it was because it was screwed in i think that what happened is when the oil cooler was record i think when they welded it they heated it up and it broke the seal around the threaded part not on the o-ring part after years of this leaking uh it does not leak anymore and andy went ahead and replaced a couple lines we got some new fittings these two tiny little lines do you have them by chance oh they're right in your hand these two tiny little lines from bugatti are about 900 dollars each they really serve no purpose to be factory i think what andy did is going to make them better um can you explain well, on that make them out of uh, just standard uh, an fittings this one here See, it's a double in, swivel. Yeah, it swivels in two spots, and it's leaking out of both of those. Yeah, so, just a, it's just a shitty fitting yeah. from a long time ago, and uh, he's going to put it back together. So we've got to put these. This cooler goes back right here, and this line and that connect to each other. We've got our shiny Turbo Smart wastegates right there that have different springs in them than when we were on the dyno. So it's a little hint for what's to come. The last little tiny thing that we had to work out was a small coolant leak that you could see all over the dyno. And Andy thought it was actually a really big problem, but it turned out it was just another little hose that needed to move the clamp a little bit in this area right here. Good news is that the leak was not where he thought. But I didn't have to take it all apart. Yeah, but I mean, it was already apart, but you know, it's like, uh, why not, right? Well, if it had been the hose I thought it was, it was much deeper. Engine out all. service. <laughs> Not quite, but pretty close. <laughs> I just want to point this out that this is still not leaking. And this leaks on every single... I've had six Bugatti Bay runs and they've all leaked. And this one does not leak. Hats off to the salt water of the Galveston Bay for sealing these leaks. Okay? Great job, guys. All right, what's next? Uh, we are go. Andy loves when I say dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> just, just dumb ass shit. We've got the interior taken apart a little bit right now because we want to make a couple of changes. Everybody's talking shit about the door panels. It's hard to see right here, but in every one of those little stitches in this area right here, there's lights. And in the videos, they don't look that good because they blend together. And I thought, you know what? You guys are kind of right. I didn't really like it either. Um, I also didn't like the headliner stars, the way they came out. E3 is phenomenal at doing custom work but sometimes the custom work doesn't fit in the application. And that typically happens when um, the car just goes away for six months and I'm just like, do everything, make it special. And it's gonna be crazy and all that extra. And so it just didn't really tie together the way I wanted it to. So I sent out a few pieces of the interior to another place to get changed to a different style. And I'm really hoping that it works because it's gonna be a, such a sick upgrade if it all comes together. Other than that, we've got a new bumper going on the front. I've sourced all of the factory pieces for the Super Sport Vitesse bumper. So that's a factory Super Sport Vitesse bumper. So we have to make a couple of quick modifications. This, this right here has a little bit different uh, contour than on the bumper and the bumper is like really thick. So we're gonna, we're gonna smooth that out and we're gonna get the actual Vitesse bumper on here because well, we can and that's gonna make the biggest upgrade in my opinion. We're working diligently on getting this car to the point to where I don't want to continue to change it anymore. I think the only thing I want to do from here on out, the only little thing is I would love to get the Grand Sport suspension. It's about a hundred thousand dollar upgrade from Bugatti, but every once in a while I get an email from the service centers at Bugatti saying they got a special on the Grand Sport upgrade. And last time I got the email, I didn't do it. I, there's nothing wrong with the suspension, but this is the 06 suspension and the 2010 to 12 Grand Sport just drives so smooth. This one drives great too. I mean, it's still a Bugatti, but I would love to get that for this car. Um, but it's not really that big of a priority. It's, uh, it's kind of very low on the list. 
because these obviously do work, but that's about the last thing I want to do. And maybe, 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 um, I had this project over here. I was going to change this and I sent these out to get haloed, but they never, they never came back. Maybe I'll have to go get, I have like three sets of these. Maybe I'll go get another set and, uh, I will send them to someone else. So if anybody um, that's watching this video knows someone who can, I can send my lights to, and you can send them back with the nice new modern, you know, 458 or 488 or the new Ferrari Halo style lights that'll make those look a lot cleaner and a lot newer. You just let me know, okay? Send Andy an email, all right? Because he's he doesn't have enough emails, all right? All you guys should just send him an email. Just say thank you for him doing all this work because it's really hard. It's really hard work to do. I come in here for five minutes a day. I film talking shit around the car and then I leave. I don't come back until it's done. And then usually I say criticizing things to Andy about why it took him so long. And then that's the end of the video. Well, she's off the lift and we are probably going to pause on the dyno because it's too hot. We went over to the dyno yesterday. I filmed it. I did all the stuff, but we couldn't really get any results. It was almost another dyno fail again. I don't know why I keep using dyno fail because I feel like we're doing something good and we're winning, but because it's like 117 degrees in Las Vegas right now, we, we can't actually get any power. We're, yesterday was kind of like a six hour day changing stuff here and there. We definitely ended up with more power than we started with and we cleaned it up in the, in the top end a little bit, but we couldn't really get any results because the ambient air temperature was 109 degrees. Plus, you know, once you add in the factor of there's no forced air coming into the intakes on the dyno, it, it's very difficult. back in the shop we put it back together i'm gonna throw the back end while well, andy's gonna put the back end together and then i'm just gonna go drive it around and put some miles on it i'm gonna try to put like 200 miles on it this weekend and uh just work through the car and work through the tune and let the car acclimate to the new power and then we're gonna figure out what to do after that we have a change i talked to matt over the phone after he left yesterday and we we, we found a new path and a new way to potentially unlock a little bit more top end power. Cause right now we've increased the power by 200 horsepower under 4,000 RPMs, which are sorry, 200 foot pounds under 4,000 RPMs is really, really good. But so that is the kind of uh, prognosis on the Bugatti right now. We've got the Mercia logo, front bumper is gonna go back on, super shiny. We got everything all cleaned up right under here. So you can see there is uh, no damage anywhere now. And uh, we're basically 100% done with the Mercy. When I mean that, it's not assembled yet, but it's all done and ready to go because in this box right here, we have the final pieces to the car. Now I wanted to open them up and check them out. I probably won't do every single piece, but like in this box right here, we have obviously, we've got the dash, we've got some of the A-pillar, some of the bigger pieces. So Andy's cleaning this up so we can open these parts and lay them on the floor, check E3's work and kind of make sure that we are all dialed in. So Andy can then install these pieces inside that car and I will be 100% done with that car and probably list it for sale. I haven't, I haven't really decided yet. I've, I've got three of these manual mercies right now. I wanna sell at least one of them. If I drive this one once, I will never sell it, but I don't want to do that. So we're gonna make that decision later, but it's worth about a million bucks in its restored condition. That might be worth putting to work. You know, that million dollars can go into some other opportunity, other car, and maybe it'll make me some more money because got some good ideas. So without further ado, let's just knock this out. Uh, Andy, are you ready for this? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, just let me move the box out of the way and we can open it up. No, but not like moving, not like opening the box ready. Like, are you ready for this? Oh, for the project? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me you feel the same as me and you're just ready for that car to be out of here. <laughs> um, we still have interior parts coming for that, don't we? Yes, I have upgraded the seats, which is probably not an upgrade. They're power now instead of manual, which I might, I don't know if we're going to keep or not because I think I can put those uh, little racks on them, but there are different seats coming for the car and maybe they'll be more comfortable. I'm not really sure. I don't know. I don't even know why I bought them. But yeah, we need, we need new interior pieces and then the interior uh, extras that I've got being made right now uh, should be here in four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. So I'm going to put this together and then four weeks from now, we're going to take it apart again and put in the new, new stuff you got? Kind of. Uh, you're gonna put most of it together and take half of it apart because I want to send out and make molds of those as well oh. So there's a couple pieces that are gonna come off so I can get the outside done Yeah, I mean the next step is I just want to lock in that bumper and get that painted mm -hmm. I know I need I need music to finish up what's behind me right here and uh, That's gonna get painted in a couple of days on Friday. Well, I don't know what today is today. This th today's Thursday So next week Friday so in a week this will be out of here and then we'll be able to clean this whole area up and all that kind of stuff, too most beautiful piece. Yep. Now, keep in mind that I chose to do no custom features on this at all. This is a strict factory refinish. Okay? That's what I call them now, refinish. The car has about 40,000 miles on it. Damn, dude, this looks great. Damn. This looks really great. Ooh. I'm not going to show you until I fully get this off because I don't want to struggle. <laughs> I don't want to struggle getting it getting it out. Look at this. Damn. And you just get that. This leather, That's guys. Crazy. This leather right here actually came from Italy from the Lamborghini source that they, I'm sorry, the, from the same source that Lamborghini is their leather. So this smells you don't understand it smells like a brand new lamborghini this is why i told you guys i cannot drive this car because i will not sell it i am like my whole body everything about me is changing and i'm starting to like perfection mm -hmm. so i can't start rebuilding these cars and refinishing them and then expecting to just sell them because they become like a product mm -hmm. of your emotion you know i mean look at this thing it's like it's it's beautiful Look, the stitch is perfect. Oh, so good. I hate to give people unnecessary compliments, but I can't say enough about E3, man. Like, they're really slow, okay? And uh, we have an ongoing dispute with my 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 beautiful S Class. It's still there. So me and Eric are battling that one out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, today. today. <laughs> <laughs> it's packed pretty well. It's like Christmas. Not gonna lie, it's like Christmas. <laughs> I had all the carpets also redone. I don't know if you can remember how, how that carpet wasn't nice. So that all the edges are redone. Mm -hmm. So all of this looks brand new again. Damn. Brand new black. Don't let me touch them. I've been working. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. Oh, oh, looking sexy over here. Yeah. Jeez. Wow, that looks so good. It just looks. You guys, I, I wish you could smell this. I, every single Lamborghini smells the same. Every Ferrari smells the same. Every BMW smells the same. And when you restore something like this that lost its scent, it brings back all the memories, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I think, isn't it? Something like the scent is the key to your memories or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But man, look at that. Wow. Whew. No more butt prints. I like about the work they do huh. is you don't have a bunch of wrinkles and stuff where the... Yeah, dude, that's like, I, I, you don't understand. I send this stuff to Florida because I have not found another interior shop that can do something like this that has factory finish where it's steamed out, everything is good, it's not loose. I mean, look at those mercy seats up there have been sitting up there for a month, maybe more. 
I know a local, Beautiful. I know a local guy that can do it, but he's booked out three years. Three years is not going to work for Houston. No, nope. We are not a three-year kind of guy. You just can't, you just can't get a better, like, interior design mm -hmm. than an old Lamborghini. I, mean, I just love it. I love it. I don't know why, but like I never felt this way about a Ferrari. Even though Ferraris are pretty nice, like the old ones. But when I bought my F40, they had no, there was no like personalization ability mm -hmm. in that car. And this car and the Lambos, like even the Countach's or the Mercy's, like you know old school stuff. There's just so much uniqueness to it. Yep. So over here is all of the OEM carbon that Ooh. went to this car. Uh, I took everything out and I had it all refinished, sanded, you know, cleaned up, clear coated. Mm -hmm. So you can see, I mean, I'll take this out, but you can see Dang. it's perfect. You know, yep. like this is obviously dirty cause it's been sitting here, mm -hmm. but this is the top of that. This is the top of that piece right there. Wow, that's good. So this sits in there, so you have that full carbon piece. Yep. Then you have the grab handle that goes on the other side over here. Mm -hmm. You know, all the interior pieces, if you could see them, yep. they're they're just perfect. You know, um, I want to find the steering wheel, and that's the last thing I'll show you guys. Yep. Here's the final piece I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> Look Damn. at this. All that. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. That looks so, so sick. good. Look at that. Brand new perforated leather, all that factory carbon refinished. Put the little yellow stripe there for texture. So nice. Damn. So in Mercy Lagos and Gallardo's, um, they had a couple different steering wheels uh, at different times. I think the SV was the final one, but like they have like the actual badge, and it's kind of crazy because that was an option, and it was like a metal badge. And I was like thinking to myself, like, damn, your airbag blows. That's gonna hit you in the face. <laughs> but <laughs> it looks so good, you know, like. This is obviously more functional, opens up, airbag doesn't kill you, but man, this is a sick steering wheel. This is gonna look just perfect in this car. Yep. Got a bunch of pieces that are black with uh, some yellow stitching on it. And those are the nice ones that are like really detailed, delicate and everything, but I don't want to unwrap the whole car because I'd like Andy to keep this up and, uh, you know, all these pieces wrapped up like this. But as you can see, I mean, I can't say enough good things always about E3 and how good they do at preparing, wrapping, sending, all the stuff that built this crate for me. It's just a magical company that does a really good job for people like me that want to change everything all the time. Now, you know, um, what's next for E3? I got a, the Savage Mercy that we still have to choose the interior color. My gut feeling is saying go crazy. I don't know, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with that car. I'm, I wanted to like just match everything, but then I was thinking that maybe I'll make pairs because I got two purple on orange cars. I've got two gold on purple cars, right? So now I gotta make a pair of something else. Um, what's, what's the new pair? Well, it, are you gonna keep the car? There's never, there's, there's no way I'm gonna sell a manual Mercy logo, period. I'm not gonna leave none. I got three right now. So two of them are factory and the Savage one's converted. So this, the converted one is the one. And today, I'm gonna spoil it. So I ordered turbo pistons for the Savage Mercy for no reason. We're not putting anything on that car, it's <laughs> turbo pistons. So in eight to 12 weeks, Carrillo said they'll be available. I think we gotta, we gotta, we just gotta start that car. I mean, I, I'm in the process of buying another project car right now. And there's three of them out in the works that are like big time projects. You've got, you got the green Senna that is unlikely to even, I, I won't be able to acquire that car because there's a lot of hands in the pie over there and, and there's a lot of going on. So probably not gonna end up here. Although I would love to rebuild that car. And then you got a couple cars out in Dubai that were underwater that people have called me on because they've got the experience of fixing cars that went underwater. But again, it's like uh, the factories want those cars. Yep. You know, they want them off the road. This one went under, under the radar over here because so much time had passed, right? And probably in 2009 when that happened, the economy wasn't as good. 
So the factory probably wasn't sending money out all over the place. Anyways, this car is going to be done. The Blue Mercy that you guys really haven't even seen yet is going to be done. I didn't show anybody that car. I probably should have. Yeah. Right? The green Gallardo is done. Did you get the uh, thing done today? I uh, got the uh, breaker swapped out for an actual fuse okay. and the uh, new fuel regulators installed. Okay. I set it to uh, three bar, which is what the old one was set at. So there shouldn't be any tune issues or anything. Okay. All right. Um, let's go drive it. So we had about 850 horsepower in this car when I bought it. And I took it up to about 1400, 1370 something, I think, or 1380. And uh, we had a, a fuel pressure regulator issue. It was going in the limp mode at the top of third. So Andy replaced the fuel pressure regulator. We probably need to tune uh, it again because the original tune of the car, it was tuning around that regulator issue, which is really stupid. I, I sometimes I get frustrated when certain tuners, they tune around hardware issues. And then you just like, you're, you just, you just waste your life, you know? chasing problems that don't even exist right it's pretty hot already i mean the damn thing's already you know oil temp's already good but um we're just gonna drive it up down the street and uh see how she does so right now it's tuned to probably around a thousand horsepower with uh, the tune now. It's just because we fixed the fuel pressure issue so it's, it's looking at, it's looking for something else. Yeah. It's not slow. Dude, that's at a thousand. fast. Well, I mean, I'm on grain shifting at 4,000 RPMs. <laughs> exploded every time I shifted. Just exploded. <laughs> That's insane. Oh, jeez. Well, I got it on a third, so... Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to try that again. Yeah, we might as well. It's better because I wasn't able to do that before. Hell yeah. So it just it needs to be retuned again. And it, it's gotta go on a dyno. Yep. So it's still pretty fun. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> I love these manual dude. two thousand horse well this one's only you know a thousand right now, but dude those cars, like I have a yellow car that's a pre-LP. And I, I went and have it rebuilt. You're gonna see we're gonna see that car tomorrow. We're gonna go out to, to CFI tomorrow, pick up a couple pieces for my STO that I gotta get sent out to uh, have uh, machined. And um, anyways, I got a, I got like a 2,000 horsepower pre-LP car. And you know that was the cream of the crop, you know million dollar bill back in 2010 and 11 and 12. And now they got stock STO engines running 1,600 horsepower. You know it's like it's dumb, but they, this is the paddles. So with yeah. my STO, I want to make 2,500-ish, you know? I got a billet engine, you know, even fire crank, billet crank, all that crazy stuff. 
and uh, I, I really like that car mm -hmm. for being a fast car. Like this is a is a car you could just drive and have a great time in, but the STO is a car that like you can't lose a race. Yeah. You just can't. I mean, there's some big boy Vipers out there, and when you have about 2,500 horse, it's like you're you're. You're like Millennium Falcon warp speed, you know? It, it doesn't make any sense. The fastest car I've ever driven was 2100 horsepower DCT. Yeah. And it was it was just getting its 2100 horsepower. So it was like they were just figuring out how to boost by gear and all that kind of stuff. This is like four or five years ago. And it was just ungodly fast. I mean, it was like you just tap the gear and it was like, you already needed to tap it again. It was almost like bam, bam, bam. Like you were just like doing that, you know? It was so insane, so insane. But my, my point to this was, is that like that car is supposed to go fast and win races. This car is supposed to like throw it around the corners and, and shift the gears. And you know, there's a part of me that wants to make that STO manual. And I might, I really might. I mean, I, I have the gearbox for it. I have all the stuff for it. I've got all the things that ready to go for it, but you know, I just, I don't know. I want to feel like what warp speed is again, because you can't go that fast when you have to shift the gears. Exactly. I mean, by the time I shift the gear, the, the DCT has already revved all the way over yep. for another shift before I pull one thing down, you know, it's, 